Tante Anin, Boujou. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Unreserved. Coming at you from the kitchen. Not my kitchen, of course, because <laughs> my kitchen is not this nice. But high up in the Toronto studios. And I'm Rosanna Deerchild, top chef. Well, sort of. And my guest today is actually one of our producers on Unreserved. Hello. Aisha. Smith Belgapo, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Now, as well as being a producer of Unreserved, you're also a chef. Yes, ta-da. <laughs> Coolest coolness. And when we found out that you were so passionate about Indigenous cuisine, of course, we had to make you cook something. So, Aisha, what does Indigenous cuisine mean to you? Um, indigenous cuisine means to me family because that's where I grew up. I grew up in the kitchen with my aunts, my uncles, you know, everybody. Uh, hunting, gathering, different types of things like that. So every time I think of food, I think of, you know, love and family and bringing people together. And also, you know, being healthy, having a full belly, you mm. know, cozy, those types of feelings. Yeah. Um, well, let's get to the root of uh, what we're doing here okay. in the kitchen. What are we going to be uh, cooking today? So we're going to be doing sweet grass, sweet tea right now. And then moving into a sister salmon ravioli. And also, we're going to be doing a dessert shortly after the tea, and then we're going to prep it up, put it aside, work on the other, and then come back to you together, and we'll enjoy it all at once. Let's start with the sweetgrass tea and the lied corn berry parfait. Okay, so with the sweetgrass sweet tea, you want to boil however much water you want, and then that determines how many braids you would put into it. So right now, we have a pot of water about three, three and a half liters right here. So we're gonna take our sweet grass, and if you wanna mm. smell it, smell it. It has a very fragrant, mm, so cool. light, calming, vanilla kind of scent. So we're just gonna put this whole braid in here, and you can put yours in there as well, Rosanna. Okay, perfect. We're also gonna be putting in some dried lavender um, so sweetgrass is a traditional medicine, mm. so it's very calming and soothing. So I paired it with the lavender because lavender is also calming and soothing. And you know, life can be stressful and there's nothing like sitting down and having a nice glass of hot tea and you can also have this cold as well. Mm -hmm. um, and just chilling out. Yeah. So I'm gonna squeeze the orange in. It's okay if you bang it up a little bit. We're gonna let that slide in. And we'll bring this to a boil and then we'll let it simmer and let it steep for about 10 minutes or so. Strain everything off. You can drink it hot or you can let it cool down and have it over ice as well. Yum. I'm gonna do one more orange. It smells amazing. So I'm gonna add some honey in now because we're at starting to boil. A boil. Mm -hmm. And this is just however sweet you want it. You don't even really need to add the honey if you don't want to, but since it's sweet tea. And this is about a cup in here, so I'm gonna put half. This was just over half in here. Mm. Cooking indigenously is cooking intuitively and using what you have mm -hmm. at whatever season that might be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is good. We're gonna shut the heat off now, take it off, let it steep for a little bit. I'm gonna clear this off, come back to you, and we'll do the lied berry corn parfait. Okay, Aisha, what are we making next? So right now we're making a lied corn berry parfait. This is the Haudenosaunee white corn, and we lie it through a wood ash process. So we take a hardwood like maple, burn it down, and then we sift out the bigger chunks of the ash just to get the, you know, the fine powder. You put, uh, I'd say, a cup of that to two cups of corn, but you let the water boil, add your ash, and then add the corn. It takes the outer hull off, which is pretty tough, and it actually imparts more calcium into the corn because traditionally we never had any Eurasian animals. That all mm. came with colonization, so there were no cows. That's not how we originally got our calcium sources from. So it came from generally plants. Yeah. And this was one of the ways that Haudenosaunee people did it. This is from a local place from Six Nations. And this is our lied corn once it's finished. Mm -hmm. So we have some blueberries. 
We have raspberries, we have strawberries, we have pumpkin seeds, some fresh mint, and then this is our maple. And you literally just mix it all up and that's that. Wow. And you can serve it in a little glass with some mint. So we're gonna start with our corn. If you wanna add that, you can. I Look just, at me, I'm cooking. Yeah, so <laughs> little baby strawberries, go ahead. And just add, you know, a little scoop of the blueberries. A scoop of the blueberries. Blueberries, yeah. how I love some blueberries. And then same thing with the razzle dazzles. And then our pumpkin seeds. We have our maple syrup if you want to. All of it or just half no, of it? No, just probably three circles around. One, be clear about these things. Two, two, three. Four is a sacred number. Four. Okay, good. <laughs> give her a mix. And then if we, so I would start from the edge. I'll just give you a little, sh start from the edge and turn your spoon in because the corn, you can't be too hard with it. It'll get all mashed up. Right. Same with the berries and you want to kind of keep their structure. More gentle, right? Yeah, then if you need to add more berries, you can. I will work on slicing up some of this mint to add inside as well. Not too much, just a little. Mint's really good for your stomach as well. Um, and gut health is really important. It helps you have a good mind and stay positive. So we're gonna add some of these little minties. If you don't like blueberries, you don't have to put them in. Put whatever Oops. berry mixture you want. That's Let's pretty keep much on it. Mixing. You got it? Yeah. Is it good? Let me just give the corn a little taste. We need just a little more maple. Oh. And the, the corn soaks up the maple flavor as well. So we're gonna just let that sit in the fridge for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take it out and once everything else is finished, we'll enjoy everything. Okay. Why did you choose these particular recipes? I chose these particular recipes because I wanted to showcase different indigenous ingredients that are generally somewhat common to people and known already, but I wanted to give them a different perspective of how to use them and also show that it's really easy and simple to indigenize your diet with mm. just a few simple ingredients. Um, and it's very nutritional for you as well. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that you're very passionate about is food sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Explain to us what that is. So food sovereignty to me is telling the truth about our pre-contact foods and also incorporating the history that we come from and that our government has participated in as well because all of those factors led us to where we are today in our present food state amongst indigenous peoples. Uh, when we were put on reservations, that's when we got pulled away from our natural food systems. There was no going out and foraging. You weren't allowed to leave the reserve. You had to have permission. So all of those things affected generations after that as well because it took away that bonding mm. that you have as a family when you go and do those things together, when you take younger generations out to go hunting, teach them what to do, when the right season for certain foods is. And it's also sharing where we are today and bringing traditions back or finding your own traditions in present day with pre-contact foods. What are we cooking next? Let's keep cooking. So next we're going to clear this off and then we're going to start the pasta and the sauce. Yum. Yes. All right, let's do it. Okay. So Aisha, let's start with the ingredients that we're using in this sauce. What do you got here? So we have our butternut squash. We have basil stems with a couple of leaves. Basil stems actually have more flavor than the leaves. So if you want to infuse a stock or a sauce faster, use the stems. They don't blend well, so pull them out after. And then we have our tomatoes. We have garlic, onion, salt, pepper, olive oil, and some water. It's very straightforward. And this is the general idea of the sauce. Mm -hmm. And the thickness, the creaminess, the velvetness that normally comes from cream or butter would be you, this is the butternut squash, so it's in the name kind it's right of already. In the name. <laughs> it's already in yes, the name. Yes. You can add cream, you can add butter. It's to your own preference. We're gonna add our olive oil. And then we're gonna go in with our onion. Okay, we're gonna let this saute. Then we're gonna cut our tomatoes. <clears throat> now you don't have to do small pieces because we will be blending this sauce afterwards, so let your blender do the work. And if you don't wanna cut up your squash, if you don't wanna peel it, what I like to do is I'll throw the whole squash in the oven. I won't cut it at all. 
I'll just throw it in there, bake it off till it's like super tender. Like you could maybe poke your finger through it. Then you scrape the seeds out and the flesh comes right off the skin and it, and it um, actually develops the sugars in the squash more. Mm -hmm. So it makes it sweeter. So we have our tomatoes. We're gonna add another one I'd say. We are going to add our squash in. And you want to cook it as long as it takes for the squash to get mushy. And same thing with the garlic here. We're not going to cut it up. I'm gonna just throw it in whole because your blender's doing the work. Right. And do you wanna give that a stir for me, Rosanna? Sure. Awesome, thank you. Well, this is starting to, to bubble up. Yeah, and we're gonna add some water. And you just let it simmer until everything's blended well together. You pull out those stems and you throw it into a blender and voila, everything's done. Wonderful. So what are we going to do while this is uh, simmering so away? So we're going to move this back behind us and then we're going to start working on the pasta filling. So by the time you see this again, it'll be all blended together and it'll be on some pasta. Okay, Aisha, so what do we need for the filling in terms of ingredients? Okay, so we have salmon and I put it through a food processor. You can use it, use your knife and just go by hand. It'll be a little chunkier. But today I want it to be easy breezy. Put it in the processor. We have ricotta, fresh lemons, and fresh dill. So that's it. That's all the filling oh, is. Okay. Super simple, super easy. And I have a cheat code for everybody. These are pasta sheets that you can buy from the grocery store. So if you were to go like this, they will get bent and have tears in it. Ah. So you can't really, you can, but it doesn't hold the pasta the same when you're mm. boiling it because both our ends are gonna be open. We're making cannelloni. So what you do is you kind of dampen them a little bit, put them in a dish or a tray or something with a little bit of water, and then they get more malleable, like mm. it's more fresh, a little rehydrated. So those are our sheets. That's how we're gonna make the cannelloni, but let's get to the mixture. Okay. So we're gonna put our ricotta in this bowl. And a little goes a long way, but if you're making a whole bunch, obviously increase how much you're using. There. And then we're gonna go in with the salmon. And if you're doing the cannelloni and you don't put the salmon in, your ricotta will come out both ends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just go into the water. Ricotta <laughs> mess. Yeah, this is really the binder. See, it's like really quite pasty yes. and it, it solidifies and pulls together once it gets cooked. It's really cool, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much our base. Then we're gonna get some fresh dill. And we just want the dill fronds we don't really want the stems or anything. It's a little bit too chunky for the filling. We want right. it to have a nice mouthfeel. So we're gonna just give this a rough chop. And then just make sure you don't have any big stems in there. If you do, just pull them out. It's not a big deal. So I like to pile them up like this and then do some rolling. Rolling, <laughs> Really rolling, no rolling. technique to it, just- Put it in a little bundle. Tighten it up. Yeah. And then we're gonna grab our knife. Make sure your knuckles are flat to the blade so we're not chopping them off. And you just rock. And then that's the dill, all chopped up. We add that in. So our lemon, I'm gonna cut this one in half and just do this slightest little amount of juice. Not too much because then you'll make your mixture too liquidy. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a, the runny mess again. Right. So then we're going to take our lemon. We're gonna give it a little, just a little zest. For that mouthfeel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For the mouthfeel. And that's not that much. So we just scrape that up. So maybe a teaspoon. Then you add that in. And I'm gonna give this its initial mix. 
And then if I need to add more dill, I'll add more dill. If I, I like to smell stuff. So once I have this mixed up, I'm gonna put my nose close to it. <laughs> and then just see what else I think it might need. Make sure everything's blended nicely and it'll start to get more pink than white. Mm -hmm. So that's when we're on that's the right. That's when you know. Yeah, that's when we're on the right path. And you'll see that the dills throughout. Yeah. Oh, you just want to show that to people. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then that's our mixture. And that smells perfect to me. I'm not going to add anything else. So now we're going to get into the rolling. Very straightforward, very easy. We're just going to take our pasta sheet. We're going to slice her down the middle. Spoonful or two, a little more. more. And then, if you can't touch it, and if it doesn't stick together like this, you didn't mix it up enough. Okay. Because it needs to be malleable, but still holding together, and then that way, it holds inside the water. You'll still have some come out the sides. Don't get scared. And then you just give it a little, a little rock. Pull it in, and roll. Cool. There's one. One. Okay. Do you want to try? Uh, okay. Okay. Yep. Maybe a little more. And a bit more. Yep. And mm. then, yep. Perfect. Get the grains in there. Mm -hmm. This one will be mine. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little rock. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. And then just like glue it. Yep. Um, yeah. Mine's not as perfect as yours, but you know. So we're going to finish rocking and rolling here. Yeah, and then yeah. when we come back, I'll show you how to plate everything. And then we can enjoy it together from our sweet tea to our lied cornberry parfait and our sister salmon cannelloni. Um, we're just waiting for the pasta to, to cook. That shouldn't take too long. How long no. does that usually take? Um, a couple of minutes. You just got to watch, make sure the color of the salmon changes to a lighter color pink. Um, and then check the noodle with a little fork. Mm -hmm. And once it's done, it's done. When you're going to give us some plating tips. Yeah, so I'm just going to start off with the drink. So our sweet grass sweet tea. You could add ice in here. You could chill it down, but we're going to have it warm today. You just cut an orange into a circle and then you do a little slice. So then it can go around the rim of your cup. And you add it in. Very simple, very straightforward. And then for our berry parfait, we have what we had mixed up earlier. I'm gonna just put some blues on the bottom. I'm gonna put a little in here. And then some more res on top. And then a cool little trick is to just fan a strawberry. You take your strawberry and then you just start slicing on a little angle and make sure you don't cut all the way around otherwise your fan won't fan, it'll break. <laughs> but the more you practice it, the more you can do it. Super easy. And then you just have a little garnish. So we're gonna put that right here. Pretty. Yeah, that's all done. The parfait is oh, done. Boy. So we're going to take our sauce, and you can see it's super creamy, mm -hmm. nice and thick, very fragrant. Smells amazing. So we're going to... This is the artist in you, I see. We're just going to do this. And when you want to do a pull like this with a spoon, you concentrate the thickness at the top, and then you pull mm -hmm. like this. Now I have some secret ones I did earlier. Secret pasta. So we're going to place these down. Then we're going to just do a little extra on top just because I like it saucy. We're going to go down with some sprinkles of the cheese. So just give it 
something like that. Do that do the thing. Yeah, go from high and then it <laughs> pulls it out. Amazing. Okay. Then take a pinch of the chili flakes mm -hmm. and then just do 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 do. I always want to do this. Yeah, there. You got it. So then we also have some spicy mustard microgreens. And don't worry, they're, they're not really spicy. They don't really taste like mustard that much, but we're doing it for a pop of color. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to sprinkle along the board and you can add in, because we need to fill in this spot a little bit more. And then we have a few little tiny pieces of basil. And then same thing, go from a little bit higher and just wherever it goes. Perfect. And then I might just do a little dollop on either end. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful. So we have our beautiful cannelloni, Sister Salmon cannelloni. And we have our parfait. And our sweet grass sweet tea. Mm -hmm. So we're going to enjoy. Yeah. Be and jealous. Yes. <laughs> Please enjoy at home as well. Thank you, Aisha, for your, your passion in the kitchen and your amazing cooking recipes. I cannot wait to try this at home. Um, Aisha Smith Belgaba is a producer here on Unreserved. Uh, we love her because she cooks for us. <laughs> I'm your favorite cousin, or is that a dear child? Um, thank you for joining us today. Ego sick. Nothing. Awesome.